Choosing between Puerto Vallarta and the Cancun side of Mexico can be really difficult. Both the Caribbean and the Pacific sides of Mexico each have their own stunning features. So in this video, we're comparing all the major highlights to help you choose whether Puerto Vallarta or the Cancun or Riviera Maya is better for you. Let's quickly compare how the Cancun Riviera Maya side of Mexico stacks up against Puerto Vallarta and then we'll go over everything in more detail. In my opinion, Cancun is better for a tropical, all-inclusive vacation, whether you're traveling as a family looking for kids' activities and adventurous excursions, or a couple on their honeymoon looking for an ultra-luxurious retreat. If you want to lounge by the pool, hit the swim-up bars, walk along the beaches, and not really leave the resort for a week, you will love the Riviera Maya side of Mexico. Puerto Vallarta is better for travelers who want to immerse themselves in a more authentic part of Mexico while having the option to stay at an all-inclusive resort or in the heart of downtown at a vacation rental or an Airbnb. Both Puerto Vallarta and the Riviera Maya are suitable for families as they each have options for resorts and hotels that have kids clubs and water parks on site. There's also a lot of options for adventures like snorkeling, whale watching, cenote swimming, ATV tours, and zip lining. When it comes to prices, in general, the Puerto Vallarta side is going to be slightly cheaper than Cancun and the Riviera Maya. If you're more of an independent style traveler, meaning you like to plan things yourself or find your own adventures as you go, Puerto Vallarta is going to be right up your alley. On the other hand, if you prefer to choose a vacation package and have everything included and planned out for you, Cancun or the Riviera Maya side is going to be much better suited for you. On the Cancun side of Mexico, you'll find turquoise waters, Mayan ruins, cenotes, which are the underground freshwater pools and river systems, some large eco-resort style parks that are really beautiful and have lots of great snorkeling, but I find they are akin to Disneyland style natural outdoor parks. The draw of Puerto Vallarta is the old town center, the cobblestone streets, the Spanish colonial buildings, beach boardwalks lined with shops and restaurants and bars, and the jungle and mountain terrain which leads to great outdoor adventures, as well as lots of smaller towns and villages that you can visit. So let's go over the beaches and water and what's more swimmable. You will find the tropical and exotic white sandy beaches complemented by that turquoise blue water on the Caribbean side of Mexico. If you want that picture perfect tropical vacation then this is the side that you want to be on. Typically most people find the water warmer on the Cancun side of Mexico compared to Puerto Vallarta. That being said the Caribbean side of Mexico is currently having issues with sargasm which is a type of seaweed that washes up on shore and it turns the water like a light brown or a beige color. It's worse during certain times of year but there has been an influx of it over the last few years. This is one of the reasons I prefer the Pacific side because this type of seaweed doesn't really happen over on that side. Now, the beaches on the Pacific side of Mexico are more golden in color and grainier in comparison to Cancun. However, you can still find pockets of softer and lighter colored sand. You just have to know where to look. This is one of the things I loved about staying at the Grand Palladium Vallarta. The beach was super soft and a very, very light beige in color, almost white. And I do have a video tour of that resort on my channel. I will leave a link below. The water in Puerto Vallarta is still warm enough to swim in, but it can be a little chillier from January to March. Also, the beaches are very swimmable in Puerto Vallarta because of its location in Banderas Bay, which protects the area from huge swells. One bonus item to consider is that the sunsets are unbelievably breathtaking on the Puerto Vallarta side of Mexico. I mean, I wouldn't book your trip based on this alone. However, it's pretty damn magical on that side. Moving on to weather and climate. So in the Cancun area, high season is typically from January to April, with shoulder months on each side still being pleasant. You will find it's a little more humid than Puerto Vallarta during these months. In Puerto Vallarta, most tourists visit the area from December to March, where the weather is consistently pleasant but can be somewhat cool at night. November and April are considered shoulder season months, but they're also a really nice time to visit because the weather is usually still perfect and there are a few tourists and prices can be a little cheaper. 
May to July is very hot in Puerto Vallarta, and this is when many locals tend to vacation in the area. On the Caribbean side of Mexico, you'll mostly want to avoid visiting from September to November, as this is hurricane season. Now, you might not encounter a hurricane, but generally speaking, it's a lot more windy and rainy during these months. On the Puerto Vallarta side of Mexico, rainy season runs from July to the end of October. Now let's cover activities, excursions, and things to do. In the Riviera Maya area of Mexico, the must-visit attractions are the cenotes and the Mayan ruins. If you've never experienced either of these, I highly recommend you do at least once in your life. Both cenotes and the ruins are unique to this side of Mexico, and you can actually find a lot more of them the more inland you go in the Yucatan state. There's also really great snorkeling, especially if you take a tour which will take you to some of the hidden islands full of marine life. If you're up for a full day tour, I highly recommend going to see the Chichen Itza ruins. This tour will also take you through Valladolid, which is a beautiful small city with this historic Spanish colonial downtown center. I actually have a video on it, so I will leave a link to that below as well. And on this side of Mexico, there's lots of biospheres and nature reserves, especially if you do a day trip or longer to Holbosch Island, where you can swim with the whale sharks. This is an island that's only reachable by a small ferry, meaning there's no cars here. It's only two hours from Cancun and has a really fun beach town vibe. Or you can go further south to Tulum where there's more ruins and this resort area really gives off a Bali retreat vibe. One of the top ways to spend a day in Puerto Vallarta is to stroll the Malacan, which is their boardwalk along the beach. Another unique draw of this area is the Zona Romantica, which is the old downtown. Wandering the streets here might make you question whether you're in Spain or Mexico. It's just beautiful. There's also an endless amount of day trips you can make to small fishing villages or surfer towns. I actually have a full blog post of 14 unique day trips from Puerto Vallarta. So if you're planning a trip there soon, I'll leave a link below and you should definitely check some of those out. But this is one of the reasons why the Pacific side of Mexico is my favorite. The coastal mountains and the jungle terrain offer some fantastic hidden gem places to visit. Like we found some natural hot springs on our last trip, kind of at the base of the mountain in the middle of the jungle. It was the most amazing experience. I highly recommend you check out my video that I did on it. And because of the hilly terrain, there's lots of great hiking to do in this area as well. Also, whale watching season in Puerto Vallarta is from December through March. If you've never seen humpback whales reaching in the distance, it's a pretty surreal and magical moment. So if you're going to be visiting during these months, a whale watching tour is a must do. But the cool thing about visiting this area is that sometimes you can even see the whales from the beach or the pool at your resort. We were actually super lucky and saw them several days in a row from the pool at the Grand Palladium Vallarta Resort. And the tequila tours, how could I forget? So tequila is only produced in the Jalisco state of Mexico, which is where Puerto Vallarta is. So you can go on all kinds of authentic tequila farm and distillery tours, and it's so much fun. Moving on to the types of hotels and accommodations you'll find in each spot. The Riviera Maya side of Mexico is mostly known for all-inclusive resorts that line the entire coast. For the most part, this is the only type of accommodation you'll find on this side of Mexico, but you can choose from two-star all the way to luxury and high-end five-star resorts. Now, if you do choose to stay in Playa del Carmen, you can actually find some authentic, smaller hotels and really great restaurants. You can still find a good balance of a nice little walkable city with a beach nearby. In the Puerto Vallarta area, you'll find high-end luxury resorts, small boutique locally owned hotels, vacation rentals, condos, really affordable hotels, and everything in between. I loved, love, love staying in the romantic zone at the Riviera del Rio Hotel. It was walking distance to the beach, but in a neighborhood where there was a mix of both locals and tourists. It was just this beautiful property overlooking the river in a nice quiet area and just a really great experience. And I have a video about that hotel if you're interested in watching that one too. As far as safety goes, both the Riviera Maya and Puerto Vallarta areas of Mexico are very safe for tourists. If you're going to stay on a resort in the Caribbean side, you'll be completely safe with nothing to worry about. As long as you don't go looking for trouble and do anything that you wouldn't do at home, you will be totally fine. 
Puerto Vallarta is also very safe, but a little more situational awareness is always helpful since you will be walking around within a city. It's just good practice to keep your belongings secure and close to your body. I've never encountered a problem with safety in Puerto Vallarta, but there are some scams that tourists should be aware of traveling there, especially if it's your first time. So I do have a full blog post about seven scams in Puerto Vallarta that first time travelers should be aware of. So I'll leave a link to that below. Prices and costs. In general, Puerto Vallarta is cheaper than Cancun. If you want to keep your budget low for your Mexico vacation, you might want to consider opting out of the all-inclusive type of vacation, head to the Puerto Vallarta side and book your own hotel and eat out at local restaurants. You can find good, clean hotels for about $30 to $40 per night, and you can find full dinner meals for like $5 to $7. In general, I tend to prefer the Puerto Vallarta side over the Cancun side. Because of the people and the culture in Puerto Vallarta, it's different every single time I visit. You'll run into the friendliest locals everywhere you go. There's so much flair and culture here. The music, the mariachi, the colors, everything is just so vibrant. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Check out my other videos about Mexico and stay tuned to the channel for more videos like these. And if you want a few more details that I didn't include in this video, check out the blog post that I wrote about it below. I've got lots more details with things like the best areas to stay. And if you want more ideas, itineraries and packing guides, check out my travel blog, likewhereyougoing.com. I've got tons more stuff in there. Thanks for watching.